What's up guys, Bro Cam here. So I was building a uh, four state QRP Infinite Half Wave Antenna. It cost about $15 shipped. Uh, and I started recording because I realized that like, soldering to me is kind of whatever. Like I'm, I've been doing it for close to 20 years now. Uh, the, what breaks my brain all the time though is winding toroids. Um, I say always, this is the first one I've ever done. So uh, I have no idea if I did it right. Um, I'm hoping I did, but uh, I'm gonna walk you through the process of how I did that. So, yep, let's get started. So I went with the, uh, the kit comes with a type 61, I'm sorry, a mix 61 and a mix 43 toroid. I went with the 43. Uh, because I was reading and it seems like that's what you want for lower frequent or yeah HF radio uh, so I was planning on trying to use this for somewhere around um, 10 to 20 but I was looking and the documentation talks about even going all the way up to or all the way down to 80 uh, so maybe I'll make an antenna for that so after fighting that wrapper, it's good to go. So we start by doubling over the wire and we roll it up. Uh, we like twist it so we get some twists on it. And uh, the diagram will be popping up up here shortly. Uh, what I'm actually building, um, what I'm trying to replicate, I should say. The biggest thing I'm gonna say is Give yourself more room. You can always trim. You can't add wire. I gave myself plenty of room here, but when I start wrapping, um, the wrap goes fine. When I trim to go ahead and solder, I don't know what I was thinking. It was like 11 o'clock at night. I was ready for bed. Uh, I trimmed these way too short and uh, it was a pain in the butt to kind of get everything situated on the board. So uh, now that I've got some twists on here, it's not the best twisty job, but um, it's, uh, it should do the trick. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, stick this in. So uh, there was a cut there because I started winding and I wound the wrong way. It's it just it breaks my brain trying to look at this. So uh, Basically what you need to, what I know is that every time the wire passes through the center of the toroid, that's considered a wrap. So just passing the wire through is one wrap, even though it's not wrapped, that's one. So um, another thing I would suggest is uh, don't do what I'm doing where I try to stick it kind of in the middle and twist that one up again and then start twisting the other side just stick it in and set it where you're going to set it and just twist one way uh that would that would have made this a lot easier it's kind of hard i have i've got really big hands and i have a uh, really bad carpal tunnel so my hands my fingertips go numb really easily so uh trying to work with these small wires and twisting them is can be kind of hard Yep, now that I've done that, I think I put a couple passes through here and then I'll I'll speed the video up. Uh, so I think that's pass or turn number three. And go turn number four. Uh, I don't know that you need to make it as tight as I'm making it. I might be making it too tight. Uh, or it might not matter at all, but it's just a little extra work that you might not need to do. Yep, passing. And then I'll bring up the diagram again here and show you that uh, after turn seven, turn eight goes through the center, and jumps across. You jump through the center, you go across. And uh, one thing I noticed too is that because I'm pulling so tight, some of the coating is coming off. And I'm hoping that's not a problem. Uh, I didn't see any warnings about that 
on the documentation, but this coating does seem to come off pretty easily. Go back to turn nine. Now let's speed it up again here. Through. Yep, 10, 11, 12. and 14 and technically that's a wrapped toroid we've got a uh a uh 49 to 1 um matching unit now so i'll go ahead and uh trim these up and again i trimmed them way too short all right i'm gonna count so we'll go through and count some so we've got Two turns for the primary, 14 turns for the secondary, and because of electronics math, that makes that 49 to 1, uh, something like, because 14 is divisible by 2, 7 times, and then 7 to the power of 2 is 49, is what I was reading. But yep, here I'm trimming up the wires. The again leave these longer um i can't stress that enough it, it, it wasn't impossible but it definitely would have been a lot easier had i just like see where i'm cutting right there cut in a quarter of an inch to the right that would like literally just that much would have helped a lot so uh like i said big hands have trouble uh maneuvering these tiny wires sometimes uh, so I use the ends of my uh, little nippers here to end them and uh, position them. Well, we just put those into the holes. So the two that are wound together on the one side, those are the grounds. So those are kind of the hardest because they're right next to each other. And go ahead and get the primary side this is the primary transmit side and we will get the secondary transmit side which is the, the antenna side fiddle with it I'm positioning it Trying to make it line up a little bit with the uh, the silk screen diagram on there. Um, just look a little neater. If I had more slack, that would have been easy to do. Oh, uh, this is something that you should also do is, um, I was always, I've heard and I've been under the impression that this coating on here will come off with enough heat so I turn my iron up to 400 and I put a whack ton of solder on there and I heated the son of a gun out of it and it didn't, it did not melt off. So, uh, scrape it off the first time, take the extra five to 10 seconds it does per lead and you won't have to go back and desolder everything and scrape it off anyways, like I'm about to do. So lesson learned there. I've got another uh, matching unit kit that I'm going to be building and I'm definitely going to be scraping it off. But uh, yeah, I've seen that before and I always thought that was interesting. Like, oh, okay, like I guess there's impurities, but the impurities will, you know, uh, work its way out of the solder is at least what my logic was on that. But nope, uh, you see, I'm, I'm just putting loads of heat into this and they're just, they're bad solder joints. So, uh, once I get done here, uh, I'm trying on all of them just to see if I can get one of them to, to do it that way. I should have just stopped after the first one, just scraped it off the right way. See, I mean, I'm just, I'm heating the, the guts out of it. It's just, so go ahead and I'll desolder all these and uh, I'll resolder them. And then uh, I don't know what's, the solder gun that is but uh it works pretty well i think it was just like the ten dollar one from micro center iron i'm using is a zenny 
on the camera. It's right, right there, right next to my Diet Coke. It's a Zenny 862D Plus. It does hot air rework. It does uh, soldering iron, obviously. It's digital. It'll do automatic with the heat, the hot air station. It's it's super cheap. I don't think they're making it anymore. Um, I got that probably 10 years ago. It's still going strong. I love that thing. It's awesome. The quad hands, the big yellow X, that is the best helping hands I've ever had. It has a very nice, heavy, sturdy base on the bottom and then two long arms and two short arms. And then you can twist the hands also, which makes doing little board work like this super easy. Put them in there, flip it over, place your components, bend them, flip it back over, solder everything together, then just clean it up. So, yep, now that I've got the... Uh, enamel scraped off it's they're still not the prettiest solder joints um i think just because i have all that leftover crud on there and uh i'm still unpacking from a move i can't find my isopropyl alcohol anywhere um so uh we'll go ahead and test these now uh and my meter died power button got bumped in the move so now that's dead so i gotta go find a battery uh that's just a cheap one of the cheap Harbor Freight ones. Um, this is, I think, was like a maybe a twenty dollar one, whereas like the really really cheap ones, like a five five dollar one. Uh, this is, I want to say five years old, and I've gone through a couple of batteries on it. But uh, other than that, the um, it works well. Um, I should get some new probes for it. The probes have been beaten and and hammered, and uh, they're not perfectly electrically conductive anymore there's some crackling when you when you're testing and stuff but uh so that was uh the unit basically so now i'm gonna attach this big spool of wire i got definitely not the uh you know the, the first time i'm doing this there's some uh green clippings you can see on the right side of the screen there where i had to soldering iron still turned up to 400 and it was uh it melted the <laughs> coating off the wire so uh i had to desolder that and put some new wire down uh this wire i think it's 18 gauge uh or maybe it's 20 gauge it's really thin but it's solid core uh i've got two big spools of it because it was just from when i had my dog's uh invisible fence when i installed that like years ago still just using it to make antennas um, so it's not the thinnest most malleable wire to work with but it's free and all I need to know about it that it's free so uh, yeah I've turned the iron down to about 300 now so it's just I'm still in 400 degree mode uh, it takes a minute, you just gotta leave it sitting on there. And it will, and you see me here, I'll come off here like, come on, why isn't it melting? Uh, because you turn the soldering iron down, Dunny. So just give it a second, uh, it'll flow. I'm just trying to not melt all the insulation off the wire. Uh, and also trying to give a nice clean uh, solder and fill that hole in. Yeah, really the only, the two worst looking joints on there are those, those ground points for the, um, the uh, uh, transformer. Other than that, it looks pretty good. Um, I'm excited to get some time and take this out and tune it up. I think I'm gonna go for the, I think the documentation says 80, 40, 20, and 10. Um, see what the documentation says. I think that's 80, 40, 20, 10. Yeah, so they've got lengths for 20, 10, 20 and 10, 40, 20, 10, and 80, 40, 20, 10. Um, I think I'm going to do 
80 40 20 10. and then this is just going to be my little antenna um or I, so I might even do lower uh lower antenna length i don't know where i'm talking right now um just because that would be less wire to carry around i kind of want this to be its own little thing i just kind of bundle up and then stick with a little radio like uh Maybe the true SDX, um, or maybe put it in my kit for my G90 if I take that places. So, yeah, that's it though. This is a really cool little kit for $15, uh, $16, all the taxes and everything. Um, I'm, uh, I'm excited to build it, or I'm excited to use it, I should say. It should be, it should be pretty cool. So, that's awesome. Uh, thanks for sticking around. Thank mm -hmm. you.